Hi guys, my name is Doug. Welcome to my messy garage. We're back on Project Pontoon Boat today, and uh, I wanted to show you a few updates that have been made. I took my father out fishing, and he decided that the uh, the old boat seats that we had weren't quite comfortable enough, so he uh, bought these two nice folding boat seats for me. Him and I put together a uh, replacement for the old poly plank uh, table that came with the boat. One is made out of uh, oak and cherry, finished with uh, spar polyurethane. We've got a uh, bimini top installed. Yeah, quite possibly the biggest change that we have is I stumbled across a four-stroke outboard. It was uh, kind of a too good of a deal to pass up. Uh, you may recall me mentioning that I figured it was going to be in around ten thousand dollars to replace the uh, the force two-stroke that came with the boat, and uh, this one was substantially cheaper than that. It is an older one. Um, it's a four-stroke, but it's a year two thousand, hundred horse, and uh, it is still carbureted rather than fuel injected. But it seems to run pretty well and uh, it doesn't quite push the boat along as fast as the force did but we're talking uh, less than a mile an hour difference so i'm quite happy with it so in addition to the changes that we've made we have a few other things that we want to accomplish. A black plastic tote. Yes, I know, that's not a very exciting thing. However, inside of the tote, we have a Bluetooth stereo. Needs to be installed. We have eight fishing rod holders, although I can't imagine ever having eight people fishing on board the boat at the same time. We have a wash down hose and a wash down pump. The purpose of the tote is we're going to mount that at the back in here beside the battery box and that is where the water pump and the wash down hose are going to live when they're not in use. The plan is to uh, run the wash down pump off of the switch panel that's up by the helm. And because I've switched from the Force to the Yamaha, the ignition switch and the trim switch have had to move. However, uh, they do make a switch panel that's essentially the same as this, but it's only three inches high that will fit in here quite nicely and give me some more switches because We've got power for the GPS, we've got the nav and anchor lights, master, and we've got the switch for the pump. That doesn't leave me much for uh, any other accessories that I want to do. And I am thinking of putting a uh, live well on board. The first thing we're going to do to uh, get this pump up and running is we're going to mount the tote to the floor, leave a little bit of room at the back so the lid can go on easily. Still leave enough room that we can move the handles to, to remove the lid easily enough and uh, the next step will be punching a hole in the floor right about here that uh, lines up with this hole over beside the battery this goes through doesn't hit anything so as long as we are in that ballpark we shouldn't hit any of the stringers that'll give us a place to run the intake hose and the power wire up to the pump some, I think those are number eight by about three quarter Phillips head screw in the stainless steel. That should do quite adequately for uh, screwing this down. Next we have bimetal hole saw. This is our supply hose. It is Half inch inside diameter, three quarter outside diameter from a hardware store. And the uh, barb fitting that attaches to the pump 
fits on there quite nicely. So there's our uh, hole in the floor with the uh, hose that goes down. I haven't figured out quite how I'm going to set up the uh, pickup down below yet, but uh, I'm sure I can come up with something. And um, I think that's probably a fairly decent position for the, uh, for the pump to be mounted. Obviously the hose has to go on here a little further. And then we will come off of here and come up and convert it over to a uh, garden hose fitting in around here. And then the garden hose, um, wash down hose, can just kind of coil up on the top of the box. So I think it's time to put some screws into that pump. That looks like as good a spot as any. I see I got some nice stainless uh, fender washers sitting there. We'll use those. Unfortunately, that's the only uh, type of screw that I have that has the uh, long enough to reach through the body of the pump. So that's what we're gonna end up using. pump is nicely mounted. I do need a uh, Oedeker clamp to go around that hose fitting and also another one for these two. Let me run to the shop and I will uh, grab those. And we've got our double ear clamps. It's my preferred method of clamping things. Much cleaner than a uh, worm gear clamp. And it takes a good hold. This is going to be our outlet. You know, I'm going to leave that long enough. Not that we really need the extra length. The hose that I have is 50 feet long and it's a 24 foot boat. But, but it uh, will work the way it is. And we have our hose, it does have a washer in it. Where this is going to be really nice is when we're fishing. Um, if you uh, catch a fish and you're handling it and uh, you get slime all over your hands or even just putting a minnow on the hook, um, in a smaller boat you would normally just reach over and rinse your hands off in the lake. But with this being so high up off the water, that's not really safe to do. So having a spray down pump is a good idea. Well guys, it's a couple days later. We're back working on the, uh, the wash down pump assembly. We've got two more things that we need to do before the system is basically ready to go and that's the uh, plumbing and the electrical. So you can see I got the hose comes down through the floor and just have it draped out here at the back of the motor. My plan is to uh, attach that to the side of the motor pod, put an elbow in and then have a hose that comes down into this area and sticks down far enough uh, below the bottom of the motor pod so that it always has water and uh, we'll get a bit of a ram effect on it when you're going down the lake but still have uh, access to water when we're sitting at idle. And if we look at the water line here and uh, this reminds me that I still have some scrubbing to do on these pontoons. Finish cleaning up these uh, the inside of this uh, left hand tune. But you can kind of see where the water line is uh, basically right about here and that lines up pretty close with the bottom of the motor pod. Basically uh, this this uh, little bracket deflector whatever you want to call it has staining on it and my recollection is that it does sit below the water so if we come anywhere below the bottom of the uh, channel here we should be deep enough that we've got access to uh, water full time. 
What I plan on using for a uh, hose clamp here is, it's actually an aircraft part. It is a, a Dell clamp and you definitely don't need fancy aircraft parts when you're uh, mounting hoses like this. It's just I happen to have a cardboard box uh, full of them kind of sitting surplus left over from when I built my airplane. So I may as well use them. They're convenient and it looks to me like it needs about a 3 16th hole drilled and I'll use stainless hardware instead of using AN hardware to mount these. Grab a drill and I'll be right back. What I've got here is an eighth inch drill bit. Uh, as I've said in many times before, I prefer to drill a small hole uh, rather than starting with the final one. Where we want this to be, um, the way I want to route this is so that it goes forward and then comes back. That way we don't have a sharp edge pushing against the, uh, you can see the sharp edge. We don't want the hose to be catching on there, wearing on it. So we want to have just a little bit of a surface loop in there. We want basically to have it mid span. The trick to using an Adele clamp, and again, this is a aviation thing, so um, not necessarily the way it has to be done on a boat, but the way I prefer is you want the, um, the P of the clamp hanging. Might be, beneficial if I move my hand out of the way. See how the uh, the tab is at the top so the P is hanging down below. That way gravity isn't trying to peel the hose away from wherever it's mounted. So that looks like a, a pretty good spot. And we'll do another one at the back. And Sharpie marker might be helpful. I can't tell whether you guys can see that dot or not. There is a dot right there. And I'm going to hold the drill bit perpendicular to the uh, surface we're drilling into, at least as best we can. sharp edge on the outside a little bit of a sharp edge on the back side let me grab a deburring tool and this is a uh, it's actually technically a countersinking tool but works good to deburr a hole in aluminum that size here we are now there are a couple of different methods you can use to uh, align these P clamps this particular model happens to have a nice little tab here here that engages with a clip and uh, with a pair of pliers hopefully i can get those to engage that'll hold the uh, the clamp relatively closed a little bit there we are i can't get this one to hold but i do have the holes lined up so we'll just take our bolt and see if we can convince it to slide through and there we are. So that holds the uh, the clamp approximately the way we need it. Now we're going to line it up with the hole. And again, before we tighten the clamp up, let's get this hose where we want it. We're not touching the stringer up at the top here. And our uh, clamp is nicely sitting there. So we take the nut, another washer, and we get it started on the inside. Okay, that is started in place. I don't need to repeat. The way I plan to get this to go straight down and into the water is using a uh, barb fitting pipe angle. I guess that's showing up well enough. I think we want this to run just a little bit downhill. And the reason for that is when we pull the boat out of the water, we want to be able to drain the, uh, the water out of the system without too much difficulty. We want the uh, hole to be far enough forward so that it misses the thickness of the transom. This transom is pretty heavy on this boat. I think we're going to move that forward another inch. 
that gives us lots of room in behind. Take a screwdriver and yeah, we'll wind this in enough that we can get the nut on the back side washer and nylock nut. Then we take the wrench and snug it up. And I always like to give the last few snug ups using the wrench on the nut or whatever uh, side you have the uh, nut on whether it be a socket or a wrench the last few turns should just be the nut and now we've got this big pigtail hanging out down here and that is not necessary by any stretch uh, what we need is we need a nice diagonal so that as water is going by um, when we are uh, driving down the lake it is hitting and priming the pump and also uh, we want it down low enough that uh, it's actually catching water when the boat is not moving so i'm thinking that puts us in the same ballpark as the bottom of this uh, angle here and it appears to live in the water so that should be good tighten this knife up so we can actually cut There we are. That should catch a nice uh, ram effect on the uh, on the water into the pump, and also be able to uh, grab water when idle. So here's the finished product. You can see the nice sharp angle that I've got cut on that hose. We've got the uh, through bolted with stainless hardware nylock nuts and we've got these two clamps tied up and we're not touching the uh, sharp edge of that cross stringer that takes care of the plumbing part of this task next step we have is the electrical so we've come through the hole in the floor under the steering console and down you can see i've got a bunch of slack just sitting there we're going to feed that along the uh, top of the pontoon here with the battery cable we're going to come out uh, of the m bracket on the top of the pontoon just in between those two uh, stringers that you see we're going to run across the stringer and up through the floor into the pump that's going to be the first cable run the Here's the other end of that cable. I want to have adequate enough slack, plus a little bit extra to go up to the switches. We'll cut that off. I know this cable looks a lot like it's a house wiring cable, but it is actually marine stranded cable specifically for use on boats uh, the conductors are tinned to help prevent corrosion in a uh, moist environment another handy tech tip when you're running wires is uh, it's always a good idea to put a label on the uh, on the wires as you're uh, stringing them that way you can always come back and figure out which one is which in this case this is the wash down pump this is going to be the live well pump and this is going to be the anchor light cable so let me throw just a piece of good old masking tape on there with some uh, writing on it to say what they are uh, definitely when i go to permanently hook everything up it would be really nice to have some more uh, durable labels than just a piece of masking tape but for now just kind of keeping things straight in my mind masking tape with a sharpie marker will work quite well anyways let's get the wash down pump hooked up Let's get these switches populated so that everything that's on here is functional and then we can worry about the stuff that's going to go into the secondary panel at a later date. So here we have a ground block and the back of the switch panel. Let's see if I can get one ahead in here with you guys. And this will be the wash down pump. This final switch is set up at the master and I've had to remove these terminals because that was the, uh, the light 
and if I leave them hooked up the light ends up being on all the time. Kind of routed the cables around and the length that I made them looks just about perfect. I think we'll just strip back enough cable that we can get on the ground block and get up on the uh, positive terminals on the switches. The utility knife and carefully so as not to cut through the inner insulator. Strip back the outer jacket. What I've got here is uh, double walled uh, heat shrink. It's got a glue on the inside of it so when you shrink it the glue melts and glues to the wire and actually seals. And we don't need to have three inch long pieces. A one inch uh, piece is more than adequate. So there's the three blacks that we'll need and three reds. These are the uh, wire strippers I prefer. They uh, squeeze and kind of stretch the insulation, cutting it. Uh, the advantage to this is that you're reasonably sure you're not going to end up cutting any conductors. Set the wire gauge to be approximately the right length for a, uh, going into a crimp connector. And we squeeze Uh, one thing you do need to be careful of when you're using these is that the butt end of the uh, wire, previous wire that you stripped isn't still in the jaws because for some reason it tends to jam things up and they don't grab properly. There are cheap versions of these crimpers available and then this is a uh, slightly more expensive version. I think I got these. There's no brand name on them but I think I got them from a uh, tool supply house that was selling at Oshkosh if I remember correctly and these work quite well. I have purchased a very similar set from a uh, local uh, tool supplier hardware store that sells a little more economically priced tools and I don't find that they uh, work quite as well as these ones do. So let me slip the appropriate colored heat shrink over and give the wire just a little twist so that it doesn't come apart when I put the crimp connector on. We need a female spade on the uh, on the red, and my personal preference is the ratcheting style crimper. It gives a, a nicer, cleaner crimp than just your automotive cheap ones, and basically, you know, you've got the appropriate uh, crimp on there when you're uh, when it releases, and then we can just put. Slide the heat shrink up onto the terminal and then clip it in place. Likewise, for the black, it is going on to a uh, screw terminal, so we need a ring on the ground block. And you'll notice the wire is just coming through the inside of the, uh, the ring terminal. That means that it's all the way through the gripper, but we don't have an, ex uh, an excessive amount sticking out that could possibly get hung up on anything and that's got a good solid crimp and we slide the heat shrink up. Now we hit it with the heat shrink gun or the heat gun. So yes moisture can still get into this end of the wire um, and cause corrosion but at least we've eliminated one entry point. Unfortunately there's not a whole lot of room for uh, my big head and having the camera set up in here while I'm working. So I've uh, got the connections made. We've got our main master in. This is the wash down pump. This is our anchor light. This is our nav light. This is the GPS power and this is the uh, going to be the horn. When I get the second panel mounted in here, the sub panel, I'm going to move the GPS down there and the wash pump down there. This is kind of going to be an accessory panel and this will be the, uh, the critical systems for operating the boat up on this top panel. But for now, 
this gets us uh, started in the right direction. I want to uh, fire up that washdown pump today. So now I need to go do the termination at the other end. Uh, well, first off, I'm going to put the cover back on this and we'll go do the termination at the other end. So we've got our two wires here, red and black. Mm, I don't know why they're different lengths, but they are. And here is our main feed coming in. I want to put a couple of tie wraps on this just to attach it to the hose so that uh, if the wire gets hung up on something down below, it doesn't get uh, pulled free. I don't want to put too much strain on the uh, pump. Now we need to trim those off, strip them back strip this back and then do a splice. We've got this stripped back. I'm going to take and put a, a fairly large piece of heat shrink on here just to kind of seal the end of that insulation up. I'm going to cut these off so that they're the same length. And these crimpers that I'm going to use have uh, built-in heat shrink. So I don't need to add more. Now in theory, we have a functional washdown system. However, I can't really power it up until we put the boat in the water because I don't have any way of attaching water to the uh, input to the pipe or the intake of the pump. I've kind of got the end of a garden hose, the trickle of water, attached to the uh, input of the pump. We turn the uh, master switch on and then turn on the pump. And I see water flowing. We're not getting a whole lot of water out of this, but that's uh, not the, any fault of the water pump or the uh, wash down system. That's just because I don't have a whole lot of water trickling in back there from the uh, from the garden hose. I think we're going to call this one a success. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and uh, got some kind of useful tips out of it. And we'll see you in the next mess.